Welcome to Navigating Texas Workforce Commission for Musicians, an interactive panel discussion. Fridays at 1 p.m. Brought to you by the Austin Federation of Musicians and with the Unemployment Compensation Advisory Committee. The Unemployment Compensation Advisory Committee are members of the Austin Federation of Musicians, Local 433 of the American Federation of Musicians, a.k.a. the Musicians Union. Uh, some of us work as uh, contractor 1099 workers and others work as employee W-2 workers in various aspects of the music industry. The goal of this session is to share our experiences, including trials and tribulations related to the Texas Workforce Commission, or TWC, with other musicians in the state of Texas to aid in navigating the TWC application process. We are not experts in unemployment assistance. We are musicians. The information contained herein does not constitute either legal advice or an official pronouncement or a position of the Austin Federation of Musicians, but rather is only the personal opinions of the panelists. The panelists do not give legal advice or make official rulings on agency matters, should not be cited as authorities in any matter before the agency or when dealing with agency staff about a case and must minimize their involvement with administrative processes. They also do not give legal advice on any other matter and any information they should give should not be used as a basis for taking any employment related action. Before taking any employment action that could adversely affect an employee or before using any sample form or policy you may obtain from this group, you should consult a licensed private sector employment law attorney of your choice. Okay, welcome back. Yeah, this is uh, Navigating Texas Workforce Commission for Musicians for September 4th, 2020, uh, a year we will not soon forget, I'm sure. Um, yeah, uh, let's see. Uh, this is, uh, I'm Aaron, uh, and Russell's joining me. Thanks for joining, Russell. And we usually, I'm here. Yeah. Uh, we usually go through uh, these websites right at the top. Um, even, you know, it's September 4th. Um, even this week, we, we have, uh, you know, some musicians still still asking us, hey, do I qualify? Do I qualify for unemployment? Yes, you do. Um, and there, there are different ways, of course, because... Uh, Musicians all make their, their living in different ways and uh, combine different income streams, but uh, the, the information is there. Um, so uh, if you're watching this uh, and you're just finding out about this, um, there, there's lots of resources. Um, but if you've been watching this and you already know um, and you're just keeping up with the latest news, uh, let your brothers and sisters know uh, about it uh, because, uh, yeah, we, we've all got to get our industry through this uh, pandemic. So... Um, Let's do the litany of websites here. The most important one, the most accurate, up-to-date information is the TWC, or Texas Workforce Commission, website itself. So that's the first one on the list. And these are all in the uh, description of the, uh, of the YouTube um, live stream that's there. Um, and we also put them on the, uh, um, the Facebook page for the event and where we post the video. Um, we always put these links there, too. Um, so it's twc.texas.gov. Um, that's their official website. Um, and then the other thing is the Texas Workforce Commission Facebook page. They, they do a, a live stream there every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 2. But I think I don't think they're doing one today because I think they did one yesterday. I think they did one on the 3rd um, because of Labor Day. Happy Labor Day. Um, thank, your, thank your union for... for uh, getting that done labor day I mean, is, of course in addition to the 40-hour work week and every everything else that we've kind of been taking for granted uh, over the last 50 years um yeah so labor day is this weekend um celebrating on monday uh let's see the other website is uh, the local 433 musicians unemployment information sharing page where we're posting all the relevant links that we find um for uh, social media disbursement um, and then, of course, our local website, um, we're AFM Local 433 here in Austin. Um, and our COVID-19 resources page is afm433.com slash COVID-19. Uh, and that's a big collection of the local resources uh, that all musicians can use uh, to get through this. Um, and then we've been promoting a lot, um, really, since probably May or June, uh, quite a while now, um, who represents me. And that's how you can find out who represents you in the state legislatures and the national legislatures and, of course, the state school board. Um, and that's uh, wrm.capital.texas.gov. 
uh, and that's that's how you can really find out about that. Our Texas uh, senators, the ones, uh, the Texas state senators, um, have really been helping us out. Uh, thank you, uh, Judith Severini, um, and uh, in particular. But uh, yeah, that that seems to be a pretty useful way to get a call from inside the uh, Texas Workforce Commission if you need to change something. Um, and then I also added a new link this week. Um, I added the link to the uh, the American Federation of Musicians um, petitions and letter writing campaigns on the Action Network. And that's a really easy way to get involved because um, it just becomes, it's just becoming so obvious that we need to let our legislators know that we are paying attention uh, to what they're doing or what they're not doing. Um, and that's that's a good way to do it. It's very easy. Um, so, yeah, uh, let's uh, let's check in on the beverages this week. Uh, I'm I'm doing coffee like usual. What uh, are you drinking? Anything, Russell? Yet? Having water, spring water. The natural spring water. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. Um, let's see. I think uh, the the rest of the the rest of the the, the panel. Uh, is unavailable today. I know one of them has a recording session. Yay! Uh, and one of them uh, is right. playing with the symphony right now. Yay! Um, so there is business happening. Um, but, of course, both of those pieces of work uh, that we know, that there, there's no audience there um, because it's it's not it's not really safe yet. Uh, there isn't confidence for that yet. Um, and our the bulk of our business isn't going to come back until we have that. Um, and that's going to be dependent on the virus and... Uh, how we can deal with the virus so yeah yeah what, what about you russell have you heard anything uh, about any any other type of work that, that's, that's happening any other type of business no not really but i i do have to say that the, the texas commission mm -hmm. has really gotten that down to a fine science and so they they know how to deal with us now so your claims are, are expedited and, and the workflow is a lot smoother yeah. And if you're in the system, stay there. If you're not, get in. Yeah. Yeah, that's a big thing. Yep. Yeah, and keep, keep making those payment requests on time every two weeks um, because some of these benefits are delayed, and they, we're going to hear more about that later. Uh, they, they, they come in as long as you have that request on record for that week and a new benefit comes in retroactively, they can get it to you. Um, yeah, so they're, they are catching up. I think you're right. That's, that's a positive thing that we're seeing. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, uh, right now, uh, the lessons are picking up because the school year's picking up. This is always kind of the natural time of year when we pick up lesson students, private lesson music students. Um, so a lot of folks are doing that type of work, um, mostly remotely, although, you know, some folks are doing it in, in classrooms that are big enough to be far apart. Uh, from you know enough from the student um, we have some folks doing that um, so yeah yeah we just got to keep on keep on trucking um, the the local of course has a, a teacher referral system um, on the uh, is it on the website yeah yeah I think there is there is it a link is. on the website it yeah. is yeah yep yeah yeah we're looking at improving that make it work making it work better but uh, but yeah people can can request a teacher there um, and that's a uh, that's that's valuable work for us, um, and of course, incredibly valuable for the students. Um, you know, as musicians, we have kind of a duty to pass on our knowledge to the next, the next generation. So um, that's that's something we can still do even during this pandemic. Um, yeah, and I know R Russell, you've been you've been teaching uh, lessons on Skype for a long time, right? Even before the pandemic. Yeah, I I, I was kind of lucky to to, to kind of get that started. A while back and and it's a great way to, to kind of give back like you said but you know not up and doing it for so long i kind of missed the the actual face to face oh yeah absolutely yeah yeah incredibly so yeah <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm with you i agree 100 percent. yeah there's nothing nothing quite like the in-person experience for all of this stuff so uh, ain't nothing like the real thing, baby. Is that Smokey Robinson? Sure. I think. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. that's yeah. Smokey Robinson and, and uh, was it Marvin Gaye sang that tune? And Tammy mm -hmm. Terrell. Oh, you think you're right? We're going yes. back a ways now. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, it is back. Yes. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> yeah, we're going. Oh man. We'll have an old school Friday. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hey man. 
ain't nothing wrong with that. Uh, oh, I, I meant to mention uh, uh, to, to the viewers, uh, you can email questions uh, to the committee, um, the Unemployment Compensation Advisory Committee of the, the local union. Um, you can email us questions at, at ucac at afm433.com. Uh, that's also in the in the description on the YouTube um, page uh, for the YouTube live stream. Um, <clears throat> and, of course, we also take uh, comments from the chat. Let me check over there. I probably need to get another screen just so I can have the chat window up over here, but one of these days. Um, yeah. So, yeah, we, we, we'd like to take uh, any, any feedback or questions or concerns or new information in particular um, that's what a lot of this is about is, is musicians sharing uh, information sure. with each other I mean because it just works better when we do that um, you know we're, we're in such fierce competition with each other sometimes for work that it seems like we can't share information uh, and when that happens the employers always win uh, and uh, when we share information exactly the musicians do better so um, yeah yeah. Um, okay. Well, there's there's not a ton of news news this week, but several big inform pieces of information came from uh, the Texas Workforce Commission <clears throat> yesterday, and then this morning uh, even. So this is kind of breaking breaking news in a, in a way, although it's it's about the same thing that we were talking last week. Um, but it has more of a name now. I I, I don't think I heard the name um, Lost Wages Assistance. Uh, program. I don't think I heard that last week, and I, so maybe that. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so now that it kind of has a name, the the lost wage assistance, and this is the thing that uh, that was put into existence um, by our, our our you know our, our president uh, President Trump's um, executive orders on way back on August eighth, um, and it's the thing that that adds on the the three hundred dollars. <clears throat> from the uh, federal government to unemployment. Um, and then it also has an extra hundred dollars that's supposed to be contributed by the states. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, and this is another example of, of you know, how these kind of, these things kind of get, you know, sloppily worded and, and it, uh, the intention, uh, doesn't get there. It, it was intended to, to provide f an extra $400 on top of unemployment, um, but the way that they worded it, a lot of the states are interpreting what the what the presidential order said uh, as that hundred dollars from the state can be from the money that the state is already providing because th that's where unemployment comes from is from the states. Um, so then that's not an extra hundred dollars on top. It's only an extra three hundred dollars. Um, but if you're not if you're making if your base amount from the state is less than a hundred dollars you don't qualify at all for it it looks like now uh, at least in the way that the state of texas is interpreting it so um yeah so it's one of those things that when when these uh these these laws or pieces of legislation or executive orders when they when they don't get uh worded right um then they can they can be, you know, kind of undone or misinterpreted or the intention is not actually accomplished. So um, that's why it's important. Words matter. So, um, but anyway, the, the, the news is, um, sure. you know, yeah, that the, the, what came out yesterday is a, a, a new entry in the TWC's frequently asked questions page. And that's specifically about the lost wage assistance program. And then today they came out with a, a whole separate page on the TWC website. That's just that's actually about the lost wages assistance and how to qualify for it and which weeks and everything else. Um, so uh, I, I thought we could we could just uh, the the frequently asked questions one is is pretty short, so we could probably just go through those. Um, you know the the first one is who is eligible eligible to receive the three hundred dollars and um, it's uh, anyone receiving state benefits greater than $100 per week um, and certified that their claim is related to COVID-19 pandemic during their initial application or are on pandemic unemployment assistance. So that's a little different. It doesn't, doesn't, doesn't cover everyone who's on unemployment like the CARES Act did with the $600. So um, there, it's a lot more limitations with this thing. Um, so if you're on standard unemployment, I, I don't think you're going to, you're going to get that, which is, uh, 
could be a big problem for a lot of us who are trying to make uh, trying to make rent, trying to make mortgages, and uh, yeah. Um, the next question is: I did not certify that my claim was COVID nineteen related when I first applied, so can I do so now? Uh, and the answer that they have is: if you have not previously certified that your claim is COVID nineteen related, you will be given the opportunity to do so on your next payment request. Oh, that's interesting. Wow. Okay, so so maybe that can be corrected pretty quickly. Um, if that's sure, and you're not kicked out of the system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's another another thing. We want to stay in the system. Which is a good thing. Yep, and keep keep doing those payment requests. Even if you yep. don't qualify for a week, do it the next week. Especially with musicians, yep. you know, we're, we're, we're all scrappy. We're all finding what we can do. Um, if you make some money one week and it makes makes it so you don't qualify for unemployment that week, make sure you make the claim the next week and, and report your your earnings because, uh, you know, and we're pretty used to that as musicians. That our income goes up and down all the time. Um, so just stay in that system. Um, let's keep yeah. going. Uh, I The next question is, the questions aren't delineated very well here. Let's see. Uh, uh, the next question is, I'm on a shared work program. How do I certify that my reduced hours are COVID-19 related? Uh, that's interesting. Uh, so do you, do you know what a shared work program is? Uh, Russell, have you heard that? I've heard that term before. I have not. I've not heard that term before at all. I, I believe, and I don't think it applies to, to musicians. I, I that have no much. clue what that means. Um, that often, although I, I have heard of it uh, a little bit in the orchestra world, um, but it, I believe it's where um, rather than rather than laying full time employees off, um, they'll put like a, if like like if they have to like lay off half of their uh, an employer if an employer has to like lay off like half of their full-time employees um, instead of doing that they'll put all the employees on on half as many uh, half as many hours so it's like they're all sharing half as many full-time jobs basically um, and you know it's it's like it's not a you know it's not a great solution but it's it's better than than uh, you know laying people off um, and I believe usually sure. in that situation I believe they retain their their benefits if they're full-time employees um, if they're ha you know if they're part-time employees then, then there probably aren't benefits anyway but um, I think that's what that's referring to um, anyway the the answer that they have is if you are on a shared work program TWC will reach out to clarify if your reduction of hours is COVID-19 related so I assume that means they're going to call <laughs> but uh, yeah we'll see um, uh, the next question is uh, will the additional $300 be backdated and of course that's something that we're we've been waiting to hear how that's going to work um, and their answer is yes the president's executive order allows for an additional $300 a week to be backdated to the week of August 1st 2020 so we were all wondering, of course, in the state of Texas, if it was going to be backdated to July 26th, because that's when we lost uh, the CARES Act uh, extra $600 because of the way that our state uh, calculates the weeks. So there wasn't a full week according to the way the TWC calculates the week uh, in, in that last week of, of July. So, um, so now we have the answer. It will not go back that far. It will only go back to August 1st. So... That's good to know, at least, because um, a lot of folks were, were waiting to hear that. Um, the next one is, will the additional $300 appear on my account? And <laughs> the TWC says, like the previous additional benefits, this amount will not be added to the weekly benefit amount visible on your account, but will be added when deposited. So that's kind of a, a vague question. <laughs> um, I guess, yeah, so... <laughs> <laughs> when they figure out they can well, give it to you, with a very vague answer. <laughs> they, yeah, they they will add it to your account when they when they put it in there when they deposit it. So, okay. <laughs> um, the next question there's there, there's there's quite a few here. I guess there's maybe maybe there's maybe there's twenty questions here. Uh, twenty questions with the TWC. Uh, how do I apply for the additional three hundred dollars? And the answer is no need to apply. Continue requesting payments as normal. Our team is updating the system. Eligible claimants shall, should receive the additional $300 a week on their first payment request on or after August 23rd, 2020. That was uh, two weeks ago now, I think. So, um, And they really are doing a better job with that. Yeah. They, they, I think they, they're, they've gotten used to us mm -hmm. now yeah, and how the our updating. needs are. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, yeah, things are going a lot smoother than they were back in April, you know. Yeah, of course. Yep. Yeah, and the updates are coming sooner, right? Yeah. The next question is, why is it an additional $300? Question <laughs> mark. Uh, and the answer that they have here is, this is the amount set forth in the president's executive order and agreed upon by the state of Texas. Oh, that's interesting. So it's not just from the executive order, it's the uh, state of Texas. Um, and like we were talking about before, um, we know that the president's intention was for it to actually be $400 with an additional $100 contributed by the state. Um, but the way it was worded allows uh, various states to interpret it this way, where it's not extra money that's contributed by the state. It's the money that's already being uh, contributed by the state. Um, so it is what it is. There we go. Um, so we all got to try to try to qualify for this if you're on if you're receiving unemployment benefits um uh because that that's what we can we can do now but uh, we'll get into where that money's coming from later on <laughs> um sure yeah uh the, the next question is if my weekly benefit amount is less than 100 dollars, do i receive the additional 300 dollars? and we've kind of already answered that but uh the, the twc answer is if you receive less than $100 a week of unemployment benefits you are not eligible to receive the additional $300 so so that's very important for for us um you know especially when musicians are reporting self-employment income uh you know when it's your income uh you know you can especially with private lessons if you're paid by the month you can decide to report that income you know, spread out over all the weeks of the month or just in the week that you get it for the month. You can report it all in that week uh, according to um, your business practices. Um, but that, that'll affect how, how you qualify for unemployment. So um, if, if spreading that income out over four weeks of the month um, makes it so that you won't qualify for any of those weeks, um, and you're receiving unemployment benefits, um, you may want to consider reporting it all in one week so that you still qualify for the other three weeks. Um, and that's, yeah, I, I, that's, those are tough decisions. Um, so, uh, yeah, it, maybe, yeah, talk with your lawyer or your accountant <laughs> about that. Um, uh, but, of course, we're, we're happy to talk, talk about that as well. Um, but, of course, we're not experts in unemployment, like our sure. intro says, we're just musicians that are sharing information. So, man, uh, let's do another one. Um, oh, I lost my place. Where is it here? Uh, oh, is the additional three hundred dollars paid per week? Is the next question, and their answer is yes. Since TWC deposits payments every two weeks, eligible claimants will receive an extra six hundred dollars every two weeks. So, yeah, there's the math there. Uh, Next question is, I return to work between August 1st and August 23rd. Do I qualify for backdated payments? And their answer is yes. If someone returned to work between August 1st and August 23rd, they may be eligible. We will, we will review those claims and, if needed, reach out to those individuals. So if, uh, you, if you fall into that category, you may get a call. You may have already got a call. So, um, Oh, and here's the big question. What funds does TWC use for the LWA? Excellent question, right? Uh, and the answer that the TWC <laughs> gives is the TWC cannot use any other state or federal funds to pay LWA. We can only use FEMA funds. And that, that news came out uh, before last week, uh, before last week's episode at least. Um, so, yeah, the same funds that are used for... Um, helping hurricane victims and uh, disaster victims uh, are being used to, to, to pay these benefits uh, right as we're entering hurricane season. So uh, that's interesting. Well, yeah. it is a disaster for us. Mm-hmm. What, what was that, Russell? Because musicians are, are, are I'd say it is a disaster for musicians because we are, are, are ready to go back to work. There just isn't any work for us. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Uh, looks like, it looks like there's about seven more of these questions here. Uh, the next one is, how does TWC receive FEMA funds? Oh, that's a good question. Their answer is, FEMA administers the program and determines the method and amounts of funding. All states that were approved during the first week 
received an initial three weeks of funding. Once the initial funding is received, TWC is required to request additional funding on a weekly basis. Wow. Okay. That's that's interesting. So we we only know, it looks like from this other page, we only know about the first five weeks now. Um, I think yesterday we knew about the first three weeks. So it looks like now we know, know about the first five weeks. Um, the next question is, for what weeks does TWC have funding? Oh, there we go. Uh, and this 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 answer says the TWC has been approved for FEMA funding for the weeks of August 1st, August 8th, and August 15th, and has already submitted an additional request and will continue to do so each week. But that's out of date because their other page actually does say they've received funds to pay for August 1st, August 8th, August 15th, August 22nd, and August 29th. Um, so that's last all the way up to last week. Um, so um, that's an indication that uh, you know they 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 need to update that page. Uh, they're they're we're reading from the frequently asked questions page uh, on the TWC website. Um, let's keep going here. We're almost through through all of them. Uh, what <laughs> the next question is? What does that mean for claimants after eight fifteen? I guess the updated version would be after August 29th. Um, and the answer is the TWC will ensure that its requests for funding are submitted timely to FEMA. LWA benefits will be paid as long as FEMA has sufficient funding remaining. TWC will provide additional messaging when the program can no longer be funded by FEMA. So they're going to use it until there are no funds left. Uh, and that's also a little bit scary when we're talking about disaster relief. Um, but there sure. you have it. Yeah. Welcome to 2020, folks, I guess. <laughs> uh, two more questions here. Uh, how long are FEMA funds available? And the TWC says, because all states are drawing monies from the same fund, the exact date that FEMA funding will run out is not known. When FEMA provides TWC with an end date for the program, we will provide claimants with that information. So there you go. It's on a need-to-know basis and... I guess we don't need to know yet, uh, or they, I mean, it can't be known yet, apparently. So, and then the last question on here is why are FEMA payments a week behind TWC's payment week? Well, that's a good question. Um, and their answer is FEMA's process for releasing funds does not line up exactly with TWC's payment system. TWC must ensure that funds are available before a week of benefits is released. And so, yeah, that's kind of what we thought. The, all the normal uh, funds for, for unemployment assistance come from the state of Texas, which is not on the same schedule as FEMA, which is a, a national program. So, whew, my head kind of hurts. How, how, how's your head doing, uh, Russell? <laughs> It's kind of spinning. You you had me at the share work thing there. I hadn't heard that. Mm. <laughs> yes, yeah, um, <coughs> yeah. I've heard I've heard of that a little bit in the orchestra world, but not not as much in the uh, in the freelancer world. We did, we don't really hear about that. Yeah, um, but uh, that is that is an option that some folks are some employers are using right now, um, rather than laying everyone off, um, coming to an agreement where where there's like a reduction of work for everyone. Um, Still not a not a great solution. Well, it makes course, but. not a great solution, but it, it it's a compassionate one. It makes sense. I mean, mm -hmm. you don't want to just shoo people out of the door and go. Well, we'll call you. Yeah. At least you have something coming in. And it's a benefit to the employer too, because they don't have which to. Which brings me to but. They they don't have to go and rehire exactly. everybody after everything's done. But what, still, what were you saying, sir? Right. It just brings me to, to the next point that if you're you know having a tough time paying your your rent or your mortgage, make that known. Don't don't wait because mm. there's help out there for that, and and I guess people are being evicted because they they are not aware of what's available to them. Absolutely, yeah. Because there's there's supposed to be a moratorium on that, and mm -hmm. I guess we need to do our part and make that known and and be proactive. Yeah. Yeah, that's you're you're absolutely right about that. Yeah, is if you don't if you don't ask for help, sometimes uh, folks aren't going to tell you about it. They're not going to volunteer that information. Um, so yeah, um, yeah. I I mean, there 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 is certain 
certain folks out there advise you know in that in that situation to to actually contact your your lender your mortgage lender or your or your landlord first and 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 let them know um you know because they may have a program to help you um but uh yeah there there there's lots of other op options too especially if they're uh, hostile to that request which they may be sure yeah yeah, yeah. But, but at least the dialogue starts and you make that known yep yeah and and you should make a make a record of it make sure it's a you know a written notice or an email or something that you can you can pull up later you know don't don't do it on a text message or a phone call make it uh make it written <laughs> so you have the date that good, you good good point yeah oh man well, the other the other page that that TWC added last week, or no, I'm sorry, this morning, uh, <laughs> is their lost wages assistance uh, page under unemployment benefits, um, and this has an overview. It has the latest um, timeline that, that the, you know the funds have been granted for five weeks, um, and uh, it has more eligibility stuff. But a lot of the same questions are answered, um, and the ultimate answer really is is uh um if you're already on unemployment um assistance keep keep making those um those payment requests every two weeks on time um if you're more than three weeks late on one of those you fall out of the system and you have to reapply um and we have had some folks that, that that's happened to some folks um so you really want to stay on time. It's not that big a deal if you miss the day, the exact day you're supposed to do it, um, but you may have to wait till Thursday of that week before you can you can do it again. Um, but just don't wait more than three weeks past when you're supposed to make the request, um, and you should be okay. Um, yeah, so that's that's kind of our best our best uh, advice on that is is to you know keep keep doing it. Um, and yeah, even if you even if you don't qualify for benefits for several weeks at a time, um, especially as a musician, we know how the income uh, comes in waves sometimes, and uh, sure. the the dips between the waves are are going to be on the deep side for for quite a while to come because our our audiences are you know are are going to stay away for a while, um, you know according to how comfortable they are using public bathrooms and public facilities and everything else and being around people, but uh, yeah. Oh, but anyway, that the link to that page is also in the uh, in the description down below on our on our discussion uh, page on YouTube, and also uh, it'll be there on the Facebook post when we post this uh, episode. So, um, yeah, R Russell, you had something else that you wanted to bring up about the uh, payroll payroll tax, uh, and so yeah, uh, th there there's a buzz about that. Yeah. That really is a kind of a backdoor way to def defund your Social Security. And it just seems that the politicians are, are once again working behind our back because they're not really in session. So how are they kind of floating this trial balloon to see if we're going to really say anything? And you should definitely let your legislator know that that's a non-go. Yeah, yeah, that should be a that should be a non-starter. Um, yeah, and yeah, you're yeah. you're right. It, they're not even in session right now. They're coming back on the eighth um, next week. Uh, at least the Senate is, I believe. Although the House has been back in session. Um, yeah, that should be that should be a non-starter. How, how how can anybody support that? <laughs> I just don't understand. Um, yeah, what do, what do you think? How how is that slipping through? It's just one of those things where, you know, they'll 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 do this, and and it's just a way to not be held accountable for it because you know they'll they'll do this, and you don't have a chance to kind of rebut this or or kind of go wait a minute we want to discuss this and it's too late now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, they want to make the deals beforehand, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Um, mm. Yeah, I think it also. I mean, it has to. It goes back to the same, the same miseducation. You know, we we've been miseducated about about what Social Security is, 
um, in the same way that we've been miseducated about what unions are in the last 50 years. Um, and that, I think that's been deliberate, you know, uh, sure. It, exactly. You know, business interests that, that are involved in government. We, we see that all the time, but they're also involved in the parts of government that, that regulate our school system. I and mean, they've, they've pulled things about the labor movement out of the, out of the school system. They've pulled things about the new deal, which is where social security came from out of, uh, out of education books, out of, out of history books. I mean, literally, you know, they, they write the history books, you know. And, um, yeah, it's, 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 really, it's really kind of scary, yeah. Um, so we, we really got to make sure all of our brothers and sisters uh, it's know. It's frightening, I mean. Yeah. Yeah, it is frightening, yeah. Absolutely. And this is one of those times where, where you know, as a musician where, you know, even if you haven't really thought much about being a union musician, this is one of those times where you need to really give that some serious thought because there is power in solidarity and we can make a big wave if we all do it. Yeah. As opposed to just one person going to the office and knocking on the door and they just dismiss you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. That's the only way any any union has power is, is in is in the, the the number of voices the diversity of voices the uh the strength of us together is uh stronger than any of us can ever be uh, alone so yeah yeah and that's that's why you know the further up sure, the chain and you since go the union is the, oh. the better off you'll be because mm -hmm. the union is the only one that is legally able to collectively bargain so mm -hmm. you right. want to be there at the table mm-hmm yeah, you want to have your voice represented. Uh, yeah, absolutely. That's that's why the further up the chain you go in the music industry, everybody's a member. You know, when they when they get to a certain point, you know, in in the uh, in the music business, they're all members because uh, they know, um, you know, that that's that's where the big decisions really get made. That's the only way we can have influence on the big decisions because, you know, the the giant media companies are are all multinational conglomerates now there's no there's there, there's no 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 record company or television station or um you know movie studio that that's owned 100 percent in the united states now they're all they're all multinational conglomerates now um and none of us can make a deal with them um we have exactly. to be together we got to use our strength together to get that done so yeah yep yeah. So and and everybody is is kind of coming to that realization now. Like like so, all all industries uh, are starting to come back, come back to unions because uh, we've we've uh, you know we've been fleeced enough. We <laughs> the, the working people have been well, this, been fleeced enough. This has been a giant work wake up call. Yeah. You know, you just wake up one morning and they tell you that you're not essential. I mean, that's unacceptable. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Just to just to hear that phrase, yeah, and feel the feel the terror that comes with that is uh yeah it's a huge wake-up call I, I think do you, do you mean like this this whole this whole pandemic and the year and everything exactly yeah i mean if, if there is a an upside to that this is it yeah that it we need to, to make sure that this never happens again that we're prepared i think you're right yeah it has to be yeah, this has to be the response and the upside to all this is the the re reignition or the re reinvigoration of uh, the American labor movement. Yeah, because uh, we we need it uh, obviously, um, and, and it was already pretty obvious even before the pandemic started. I mean, people were talking about a new a new gilded age with that. That sounds great. Oh, a gilded age. That means everything's covered with gold. But what that really means is that <laughs> there's there everything is covered with gold for the one you know the top one percent and everyone else lives underneath uh, that sure you know that's what the, the the term gilded age means um and we were already headed to that before before the pandemic even started you know uh we were just the, the income disparity is just getting bigger and bigger and bigger um and then this pandemic hits um yeah a really great uh article from our our national our international president uh the uh 
American Federation of Musicians in the newsletter this this uh, month, um, where he talks about the you know kind of the difference between a pandemic and a and like a war, you know, and, and you know they're 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 similar in that uh, they they cause you know this this economic uh, upheaval and everything, but but in wars like capital, you know, money is actually destroyed, property is destroyed, you know, but in a pandemic the the money the wealth the the property is not destroyed it's it's all redistributed exactly. and it's all going up the chain to the wealthy and the to the top one percent yes and the poor are getting poorer and poorer um because they cannot work they cannot you know they, they can't find work uh they don't have health insurance they can't get sick they've been they're gonna get sick anyway and uh yeah it's it's a it's a horrible situation and the the only solution you know, is, is, uh, organizing. The best way that I've heard it put was a guy who was a homeless guy. And he told me I'm too poor to be poor. Wow. <laughs> Man, that's stuff to make you cry. I mean, that's, yeah. you're at the, yeah, just let you know, he's, he's at the bottom of the barrel. Matter of fact, he's not in the barrel. Yeah. He's like outside of the barrel. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean that shouldn't even be possible. How can that be possible in the United States? You know, we're the greatest country in the world. Yeah, because engine gone, and how is it that we can miss like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's amazing, you know. Well, and you look at the the quantity of of money that's going into, you know, relieving corporations and businesses and giving them tax breaks. And in combination with, you know, the amount of money that they're pouring into finding a vaccine right now, because they finally have realized that they need to, uh, you know, you, it, it's a fraction. It would be a fraction of cost of all that to, to have universal health care, you know. You know exactly. That's, that's something I think we got to keep bringing up. It's like, if we can afford to do all this, we can afford to, to give everyone health care, you know, and that would solve a lot of these problems before they happen, you know, so... You know, it, it's it's actually more profitable to do it that way. Yeah, and that's because that's being proven. Yeah, productivity happens when, when people are at work. Yeah, that's a great point. Yeah, yeah. Well, and also and when you everyone, don't need a Harvard study for that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, absolutely. That's very obvious. Yeah, right. Yeah, and one just just the idea that when everyone's in the same system, every it's 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 going to be cheaper. The more people in in one system. It, the costs go down, and there's examples of that all over all over the world. But yeah, they're talking about that on the PBS NewsHour this week. Exactly. Um, yeah, there's a, a series all week on that. It's very been really good. So yes, indeed. All right. Well, uh, were there any other topics we should bring up this week, uh, Russell? I, I think I'm out of stuff on my agenda. I. I think I'm out of stuff too. I think we covered it all. Yeah, I think that's that's what we got this week. So, um, yeah, uh, to the viewers, you know, um, you know, keep uh, keep the faith. Um, if you're in the music business, stay in the music business. Um, we are going to get through this, and uh, don't give up. Keep making those uh, those requests uh, and or whatever else you're doing. Um, keep 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 doing it uh, because the business of music will continue, as my friend Russell always says. And uh, we will see you next week. Thanks very much. Thank you, Russell. Thank you.